Quest, where two college professors take a second look at questions and answers from around the internet and from you, the listener. My name is Professor Will McBurney. Uh, my name is Professor Mark Sheriff, and we are now T minus two weeks away from going back to the classroom. <laughs> well, what are we going to do? Are we ready? Are we ready? Uh, emotionally more than ready. Um, but uh culturally will be interesting especially with uh with the with the delta variant roaming around that is oh i haven't heard anything about the delta i have no idea what you're talking yeah, about what, what, is, what is this what is this delta variant of which i speak it, it, is that the new uh yeah. like silver platinum level if you're flying delta you get the delta variant and that's what yeah. gets you in the first class is that what it is well i i don't think they want you on a plane if you have the delta <laughs> variant uh regardless your airline of choice now um yeah, there was a there was one tweet I saw where it's like, you know, the biggest reason for everyone to get vaccinated so we don't have to learn the Greek alphabet. Um, alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu. I, see, I had to learn. I had to learn how to do it fast, like the whole like before a match burns down right, yeah. kind of weird hazing thing when I was in my <laughs> fraternity. No, I'm dead serious. Yeah, we did what, that. This is this is one of the many reasons I didn't join a fraternity. All right. Well, in all fairness, we were a dry fraternity anyway because uh, our my, my fraternity uh, in the in the in the eighties was apparently the wildest fraternity yeah. on on campus at Wake Forest University the, the, and the, the Animal House of Wake Forest. Yeah, apparently so. they got kicked off, and then when they came back, they had to come back dry, and so it was a bunch of computer science nerds. <laughs> Sorry so. about that hissing noise there. That was my. Uh... Yeah. Bottle I'm opening. All right. I'll edit it out. Uh, so I just assumed you were speaking parcel tongue. Yeah, no, um, but it, no, trying, but, trying but, to reach yeah. out to our snakes in the audience. Oh, okay, there you go. Um, so, what are you excited about? Is there anything you're excited about with, I, with going back to school? I am excited about um, in person lectures. I have found teaching online to not to not be rewarding in the way that made me get into this profession in the first place. Uh, teaching <laughs> to a screen full of black rectangles is not as rewarding as seeing students' faces. Well, um, that's fair. That's and, fair. And it, it's also, uh, now to be clear, I mean, I'm fully cognizant of the, the risk of the Delta variant, and I want to do what I can to mitigate it, but yeah, I, I need to see I, I need to see human faces again to be able to continue enjoying teaching. Mm. Yeah, I feel like I've leaned the other way in that I'm just doubling down by making more videos and now doing a podcast with you. So, well, <laughs> just... fair enough. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think there's part of me that I think mentally I need to get back into society mm. and, and into the classroom to start behaving like a human being again. Um, I, I do plan on showing up on the first day of class wearing a shirt and tie and, and you know, exercise shorts, because that is what I understand now as being professional <laughs> dress. Um, but uh, but actually, what's really interesting is, is uh, you know, our our employer, the uh, School of Engineering and Applied Science at the University of Virginia uh, is offering these lanyards of different colors, mm -hmm. uh, a green for, hey, what's up? Come give me a, you know, big old high five, slap on the back, whatever. Yellow for, I'm interested in talking to you, but, you know, maybe not I'm not into you that much. And then orange, not red, orange for, stay the heck away from me. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I picked up my... I yeah. picked up my orange, um, mm -hmm. which, you know, is actually more delightfully UVA than the other colors. Um, so I'll wear my orange lanyard. And the funny thing is, is the first time I wore it, I only wore it on grounds one time. I went in to, to clean my office and there was a I, I was walking back from from somewhere across grounds and came across a colleague from the School of Engineering. You don't know this person. They were they were in computer science before you were here. They moved to another unit. But regardless, she sees me from a ways off is in engineering it's like, Mark, how's it going? And like runs toward me to yeah. give me a hug. And I jump back with my hands. I'm like, no, see the orange. Stay yeah. back. <laughs> I'm not ready for human contact. Here, here's a question. <laughs> is there text on that orange lanyard? It does. It says. Is it, um, is it, is it far enough? Is, it, is the text large enough that you could see it from far away? Or is there possibly going to be a reverse effect where people are going to have to get close to you to read? Ah. Uh, so okay. I'm holding it up so, for, for so the here's the thing the blue coloring on the word uh my so it says I'm keeping my distance and all the text is in white 
except for there's blue coloring in my, and I guess that's just for school spirit, but it makes it harder to read because it's also it in smaller text, uh, which I guess... It, oh, and if it's flipped over, it has my 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 uh, my name badge, my ID yeah. badge in it, which yeah. has actually been very useful because they apparently put more RFID doors since we've been gone. <laughs> They've huh. technologically upgraded our building. Huh. Um but if anyone wants to see the picture, you can go to my Twitter account at Mark Sheriff, and I posted a picture a few days ago, and you can see exactly what it looks like. But I'm just worried people are gonna have to get close to to read what it says. Yeah, no, and get at that like point, right up on me, like yeah. six inch away. What? My your distance? What does that mean? I don't know what it means. I mean, I'm not. I, I mean, that's one thing for me to like jump backwards from a colleague who's rushing at me to right. give me a hug, which is. I mean, really, I mean, I, I mean, I, it's another thing where it's, is that appropriate even if we're not, but eh, we're not, not going to go there. I'm more worried about day one because I mean, let's face it. We are, we're popular. We're popular professors. I mean, come mm. on. <laughs> we teach a big class that everyone wants to get into because it's required. Um, but because, <laughs> but because of that, the wait list is long and I'm afraid we're going to show up on day one and we'll have more than the fire code number of people in our room. Right. Trying we to need get to, into the class. Yeah. yeah. We, we need to, we need to send out something to say, Hey, if you come and you're on the wait list, we're just not going to let you in because that's not. Yeah. Cause yeah. Yeah. No. no, that's not cool. That is not cool. Um, well, I, we're talking about school. I have to, I have to go and start with it because it's something else you've got to be missing. And that is all of the great excuses. Get ready for another round of, Oh, you excuse have some. me. What now you, you have. Okay. All I right. did. I all did right. have some, okay. I did have some, all right, well, it sounded I'm ready. like you didn't. You you were gonna pull it up I, I, next I week. I was going to try, and yeah, and I, I just I it has it has been a week. I'm doing a lot of work with electrical stuff around the house, which is making me nervous. I've installed I installed a doorbell today, installed some fans. Okay, so admittedly, installing the doorbell is kind of like oh, okay, that's like then installing a fan is like I'm gonna hang something on the ceiling that could potentially fall and crush me. Yeah, so well, you can get I, electrocuted either way if you're not careful. Well, that, pff, I, the, I think the most nerve wracking thing like that I've ever installed is I installed a gable fan up okay. in the attic, okay. um, which one, my attic is very small and very hot mm -hmm. and as addicts tend to be as addicts tend to be, it has no floor. So you had to kind of step in between the insulation. Right. And apparently this gable fan was made of, I don't know, razor blades. Like the entire frame itself was just very painful to maneuver. Yeah. So well, I have, I have all the respect for you and, and apparently your electricity still works cause you're still recording. Yeah. Well, I, and so, so I installed the fan up here. So aren't you in a new townhouse? <laughs> No, no, I'm, at, I'm still in the same. I just moved rooms in the townhouse. Well, no, but I meant, like, relatively speaking, your townhouse was oh, yeah, built yeah, yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we, we, in the we're, last we're the first 18 owners. months. We're the first owners, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which in Charlottesville means we bought it, like, three days before they, like, started the final phase of building, because that's how that yeah, works exactly. here. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. Things just dis I mean, yeah. We'll never move out of this house. We got it. We got lucky we're here. Yeah. But... But it doesn't matter because fiber's here, and I, I'll keep talking about it until they finally turn it on. But regardless, let's play the game. Folks, you can play along at home, of course, and maybe I'll record a message for Will McBurney's answering machine. So, <laughs> question number one. Record it for my doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> That'll confuse people. All right, go ahead. Sorry, I've interrupted you enough. A package is here. A package is here. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's actually a weird joke from my hero academia that someone might get all right first off, oh i do need to give a special shout out to sam sam t who was the student who submitted the quidditch excuse that we did last episode, he listened to the show and he let us know he heard it. And it's great to hear from him because I hadn't heard from him in a while. And also it's proof we have more listeners other than my parents. Okay, here we go. Next question. First question. A, a student in my world history course turned in a beautiful picture of Mount Vesuvius as part of their report on Pompeii. I asked where they got such a nice picture and they said that they went on a trip there when in high school. The funny thing was I had seen that picture before on the cover of the same National Geographic issue that was sitting on my desk. Right in front of them. I gave them 24 hours to submit a new picture. B. 
B. Sorry, Professor, I'll need an extension. I need to miss an entire week of class because of Valentine's Day and my boyfriend rented a room in a nearby town. And C. A student in my college music history class said he didn't feel prepared to take the final exam before the holiday break because he'd spent all his time practicing the organ at his church job in preparation for Christmas services. When asked in the name of the church, I knew he was making a far-fetched excuse because, well, I'm the organist there. So, again, remember, okay. two of these are either ones that I have received or I found off of the professor's subreddit for right. excuses when people are ranting. And one of them is from the ether of my mind that I have created. So, your options are the picture of Pompeii. The that, student sharing the student, way too much personal information, which is the second <laughs> one. The second one's way too much personal information. And the third one was the organist. Talk I'm is torn between, Silence I'm, is yeah, great. I know. <laughs> I, I'm torn between one and three. Um, only be not only because as disturbing as it would be, I've had students share way too much personal information before, and unfortunately, I I wouldn't be surprised. The I I'd be disturbed, but not surprised for for number two. I'm gonna go with the. I'm gonna go with the church organist. You're going to go the church organist? Yeah. It was Pompeii. The church it, organist yeah. was one that I did find on Professor's Service. This is the same way you started last week. Missing yeah. the first one. Let's see if you can pick up the second two. Okay. Question two. A. So, so sorry I missed the submission, Professor. I got new glasses yesterday that made the date appear to be the 18th, not the 13th. B. Hi, Professor. I've been confined for the last 10 days in a house that wasn't mine, so I didn't have my things with me and I wasn't able to do the guided activities. If it's no trouble, could you send me the activity and I'll send them back to you through this email. Sorry for the inconvenience. And C. Sorry, Professor. I didn't complete the assignment because I ate too much shrimp last night and have horrible, horrible diarrhea. Can I do it tomorrow? So I've actually had a student send me something to the effect of C before, and yes, they explicitly... <laughs> use the word diarrhea. They they did not use a repeated adverb, but they did use the, <laughs> the more important word there. Um, I'm going to say that I, I believe the second one w could, could happen. Um, I'm trying to actually judge Mark's face here. <laughs> um, what was the first Poker time? face. So second one was comb confinement. Second one was glasses. Oh, second... No, the first one was glasses. Oh, sorry, sorry, first one. So yeah, first one was glasses. Second one was confinement. Um, so I could actually see a student trying to say like, "I got new glasses, therefore, how can I, how can I swing this?" Uh, I, I can see. I mean, to be clear, I don't think the student would be honest when they would say that, but I believe they could try to swing that. Uh, I'm gonna go with. I still think I'm gonna go with the glasses one. And you're right, it was yeah. the glasses one. Very okay. good. Okay. All right, this so, is it. So same, same situation as last week. Same situation. All right, for, for all the n fake nothing <laughs> that we go for on this game, question number three, A. Hi, Professor. I just realized I submitted someone else's work instead of mine. My actual submission is attached. Thanks for understanding. B. Sorry I didn't submit the last 10 assignments. I shouldn't still be signed up for your course, as I know I dropped it. So I don't want to get an F. Can I just turn in everything to you next week? And C. Can't come to class today for the test. I can't walk because I attended the local festival and was dancing so much that I have corns all over my feet. Okay, here's the thing. I know <laughs> A is real because I was involved in that conversation. <laughs> so it's an easier so, one then. So this is, this is actually a 50-50. To be clear, A absolutely happened. We had a student who submitted someone else's thing and then emailed us and was and said, no, no, I meant to submit this one. And they weren't even similar was the weird part of it. But whatever. Anyway. Um, all right. <sighs> Dancing festival corns all over the feet. What was B again? Sorry Nip I didn't submit the last 10 assignments. Okay, I shouldn't yeah. still be yeah. signed up for your course because I know I dropped it. I. Huh. I, I'm going to say that's, that B is the fake one. Like a champion. That is 
Correct. You have won yet again. Your professorial instincts are strong. Because they would just... They, their first request would be, hey, can you do something to make to actually have me have dropped the class? Yeah, that's... Yeah. That, 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 after I made that one up, I, I realized that there's no student who had ever tried, who, who who had forgotten that they had or had not dropped a class. The option here is not to try and make up an entire semester of work and what well, the option be, is to, to go clear, to the dean. To be <laughs> clear, to I can imagine a student trying to do that if all else failed. Um, but, but yeah. sure, or ask for but an that, incomplete. That would, that would not be step one. All right. Well, I have some questions. Well, that's good. Uh, that, that, that tends to be what, what this podcast is, is about no, a bit. I'm going to turn this all into bits <laughs> that I just make up. Um, why do, uh, or why do web bots exist with all, why do they still exist, I should say, with all the verification methods available and, um, with all catch buzz and, and everything like that? Why are they still there? And, and in fact, still... So to be clear, they're not meaning like bots that we might write to scrape from a website for our purpose, like scrape from Gradescope to, you know, populate a grade sheet or whatever. But in this case, they mean like bots that we would consider invasive, bots that we don't want to exist. Why? How are those still existing and how are they still so prevalent on websites? Are you referring? So so maybe we should clarify what we mean by bots, because yeah. there there are always going to be scripts that that like a search engine would want to run so that you would go to a website to figure out oh these are the pages i need to index so that they show up in mm -hmm. a search matter of fact website designers will put a small file called robots.txt mm -hmm. i mean aptly named um in the main directory of a website specifically for the robots say hey robots here's the map Right, Go to yeah. town, find everything. So you're talking more about those bots that are going in and sniping all those PS5s that I tr keep trying to buy. Right. So like bots <laughs> on Newegg or Amazon, but also bots on uh, social media, for example, that, that will spread misinformation. Um, and, and of course, these are not literally like there is there is data from Star Trek, you know, sitting at a computer like I will <laughs> right. typing things. It's it is a still a it is a program. That is pretending to do some sort of human interaction. Right. Um, and why are they still, why, as in, well, I mean, we know why they're used to sow discord and to try and make money and, you know, other, right. other sorts of nefarious purposes. I mean, there's a lot of money to be made or a lot of trouble to be caused. If we look mm -hmm. at the craziness that happens with social media, um, how do they actually get past those things? Gosh, I have, you know, I, I've wondered the same thing, honestly. Well, if you've noticed, catchphrases have changed over time. A, a lot yes, of them. much and much to all of our frustrations, because gosh dang it, I have clicked on every single traffic light in this stupid picture, and that's not a traffic light. That's part of one. I hate you. Sorry, you can <laughs> well, you can no, go but, back but, to but, it now. But w the reason they change is because bots have an incentive. You know, th this is kind of a, a there's a predator prey mentality here, where bots. You know, there's an incentive to break a catchfa, so you could get onto a website with a lot of bots in bulk, and so there's an adversarial setup where, as we make a catchfa, immediately people are, and I, I'm saying it wrong, it's captcha or some, I, I, I've seen it with a pha, but anyway, um, the people will make bots to try to break those to try to figure out you know okay well the text is distorted what does it actually look like and as time progresses those bots get better and better at it and in fact they use existing catchphas as tr testing training material so they naturally get better at it um so as the catchphas get better the bots get better at breaking them yeah um, i mean and and, and so it is arms sort of an race. arms race. Well, it is an arms race, but yeah. the thing that and 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 I'm sure we'll talk about this on the Doomsday podcast. The thing is, oh, this is this is not a race that humans can ultimately win, in my opinion. Um, that is to wow, say, wow. Let's bring that positivity. Let's well, bring that. I mean, long term speaking, and so we're going to have to start recognizing that there's going to become a point that. The, these these simple like little in-web apps like oh turn the elephant right side up 
Like that's <sighs> not gonna work, you know, to to prevent people I'm just from, flip from getting all those elephants, one. though. Well, and it, but again, like, and and there's there's real monetary incentives. For example, you 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 mentioned buying up all the PS fives on like Newegg or on Best Buy. Um, you know, there's actual monetary incentive for those because of resellers. Sure. And any time this is just basic microeconomics. Any time that there are more people willing to buy a good at a price than there are goods available at that price, you have a shortage. And when that shortage is there, the price, people have a natural incentive to buy and resell at a higher price. So that's that's what we're seeing, not just with, you know, graphics cards and PS5s. I mean, we saw it with toilet paper, even though that was only, only lasted, what, like a, a, a week and a half, two weeks where there was all this media hype around the toilet paper shortage. And so people, I mean, you could see videos, people were going to supermarkets first thing in the morning and buying as much toilet paper as they could fit in their car and going online and reselling it. And and so now you're talking about a digital marketplace, you can do that. It's the same thing. So already it's hard enough to buy a graphics card on Newegg. It's basically impossible on Amazon. And there are bots there. But now imagine that you could generate literally thousands of bots at a time because you can break all the security protocols there. Um, so one side of it is no security measure against bots, uh, against bots acting in a way you don't want them to act, to clarify. No security measure is perfect. It is True. temporary. It is a stopgap measure that will eventually fail. But a second somewhat problem that can occur is you have to think of this from a an incentive standpoint. Is there enough of an incentive for a company to block out bots to spend the effort to do it? So for Newegg, it is, because if they want to have people think, oh, I need computer parts, let me go on Newegg, they want to know that they have a reasonable chance of actually getting the parts they want, so they're likely they're more likely to stop bots. What about if it's something like Facebook, where the the most important metric is getting people engaged? And what gets people engaged? Well, rapidly posting articles that generate outrage. That's a pretty good engagement tool. Their incentive might become a bit perverse in that situation. So, you know, you, you have to think of those API. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Please connect here. Well, post, post, post more articles. Well, so there, there's a great uh, video um, from uh, Tom Scott who's a really good YouTuber, talking about how APIs, when Web 2.0 first came out, it was, like, people think of Web 2.0, they think of social media, but one of the other big things for Web 2.0 was APIs, the idea that there was going to be this, not just network of new websites of people interacting, but also a network of APIs interacting. And so uh, he managed Web services. To, he managed to use the API for Wikipedia and the National Weather Service and like a G uh, and a, a GPS API to figure out where you are, what the weather is where you are, and what planet in Star Wars is most like that weather. And it would combine all those things, and you click on the weather, and it would say your weather today is Tatooine, and you're like, wow, that's really hot. Or your weather today is Endor, or you know. And I guess at that point you're you have to literally work describing an assignment from my web design class. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> It's really, yeah, yeah. it's almost spot but, on. But but a lot of those tools don't work anymore. You know, Twitter, for example, yeah, has a, is a lot more restrictive with their API than they, than they used to be, and now even more so than they were before. So, for example, now uh, there is nothing in the Twitter API that lets you make a poll, for example, or vote in a poll, for example. Uh, you you I mean, you could figure huh. out how to do that with a bot. So the idea of a bot in that case, it's not working with the API, you're trying to get the bot to look at the screen sort of like a human looks at it and interact with it in that way, uh -huh. uh, which is doable, but much harder and breaks when the uh, when the graphic user interface changes. That is true. So it's much more brittle. Uh, so, you know, they're still there. They're they're unfortunately not going away. Uh, and yeah, it's something that we'll have to be cognizant of. I'd like to talk about deep fakes because it's related to this at some point, but but not there today. is an amazing, amazing deep fake of just a slew of our colleagues mm -hmm. singing. What? Oh gosh, what was it's the song? Some, 
I, I actually don't. I did not recognize the song. I went and looked up the band, and then I played it for the class. And then they were like, "What are you doing, Sheriff?" And it was it was, it was one of these. It's one of the boy bands that is later than you know my era of New Kids on the Block. <laughs> the, yeah, I mean, I, I way, think I was way way later. I think I was like a kid when Backstreet Boys were a thing, and I already hated them when I was like nine. So. I know the pandemic has done weird things to my brain because I remember at least one day during the pandemic, all I did was look up Backstreet Boy videos. And that was, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know if we can work together anymore, Sheriff. <laughs> hey, you get desperate, yo. It's just the way it's the way it works. You get desperate, you get but desperate you know what for the Backstreet Boys. All right. Well, to each their own. OK, there was a really I, cute's not the word I'm looking for, but there was this, <laughs> that's gonna give me more trouble. There was this really amusing video where they had the Backstreet Boys do a reunion singing, and and they all were singing in Zoom, and it cut cu- cutting between them, and like NBC played this on, or maybe Fox played it on some sort of digital concert night, and it I don't know, it was just amusing, and I was like, oh, I remember the Backstreet Boys. Do they still sing? And I was like, oh my god, they do still sing. And a matter of fact, a friend of mine, friend of my wife's. It was like, hey, I've got tickets to see the Backstreet Boys in Florida. You want to come? And I'm like, pandemic, no. But Mm -hmm. I'm slightly tempted because that's kind of hilarious. So I don't know. Whatever. (laughs) Hey, let's try and stop me embarrassing myself. You want to talk about something else that's cool? (laughs) Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I like barcodes. You like barcodes? I do like barcodes. You know, barcodes are always a thing when I was a little kid Mm. that I just... I, I thought was literally fascinating. I was here's this these just these lines yep. and I wave it over some cool red lasers at the grocery store and magic happens. Mm-hmm. And also kind of when we got into I guess I was in middle school, I guess you were in elementary school, I don't know. There were games that came out, particularly for I think it was for the Game Boy at the time. Yep. It actually might have been Game Gear, where you would it was scan Game Boy a bar- Advance. It was Game, it was Boy. Game Boy Advance. Yeah. You would scan a barcode and it would generate a, a creature, a monster, an item, a something. And that's super cool. And for the longest time, I was like, well, wh- what's going on here? How does this actually work? And all it is, of course, is a number. It's mm-hmm. just it's just a number. It's just encoded, you know, with little lines. And it's just a no- number encoded. And, you know, that's how we look up items, the UPC code. And then all of a sudden, we went to these things. Instead of barcodes, we have QR codes which are nice, small Mm -hmm. portals to hell. You never want to stare (laughs) at a QR code for too long because you will open a dimensional portal into the realm of the Dark Lord. And those QR codes are basically just like, hey, you know, bar codes are cool. They just do numbers. What if we could do entire sentences? And that's basically what a QR code is. Yeah, it's it's a two-dimensional bar code. It's a a two-dimensional bar code. But it it, it became a thing Mm -hmm. during the pandemic because there, there was a lot of hype. Oh, we we can we can do touchless menus because you scan the QR code and here's the menu and you can do the ordering and things like that. And you might think, oh my gosh, that the, these things are magical. They have the. It's just a freaking URL, right? And yeah. so it's not that fancy, mm-hmm. but there are way more uses for QR codes than I ever knew. I mean. Yes, you you can encode a string in them. Yeah. A string of characters, uh, which de- could just be... A, to hmm? define the term encode, just quickly to define that term. Uh, encoding is just taking some information and representing it in a number in such a way that you can decode it and get the same thing that you encoded every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's... it's it's you're using um, Ralphie's encoder wheel and you are encoding a message. I mean, it's a little more complicated than that, but yeah. not, not a not a ton. I not, mean, because yeah. you just you're just encoding it something else. But apparently there are QR codes where you can encode um, the information for a Wi-Fi point. And so yep. if you open in a in, you know, I in, actually did in, this in, today uh, oh. when installing my doorbell. Uh, which was a a video camera doorbell. Uh, In order to connect it to the Wi-Fi, I have to first connect my phone to the Wi-Fi. Then when my phone's connected to the Wi-Fi, I say, okay, it's connected, I'm ready to proceed. And the app generates the QR code based on my Wi-Fi information 
and then you literally the camera show, can read it. You show the QR code to the doorbell, and the doorbell reads it, and then figures out how to connect to my Wi-Fi. It's it's just yeah, yeah. It's a really it's a really convenient way of transmitting text information that mm-hmm. can be read by something else. And part of the reason that. Well, besides the fact that you could just put your, your menu online and people could, I'll get to, I'll get to that in a second where it could get a little bit more interesting, mm-hmm. but um, it removes a point of friction, right? If you, if you are selling something and you're like, go to our website, HTTP colon slash slash dub 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 slash, you know, mm-hmm. my, what my awesome website.com. And you see the, that string of characters in your mind gets go HTTP. <laughs> Right, yeah. I don't want I don't want to no, I'm not I'm not gonna remember mm-hmm. it, not gonna type it. But if you just hold up your phone and go, no, and it just appears, yeah, you've removed a point of friction to try and get people deeper into the pipeline. Yeah. I mean we and and you see this type of thing happen where we went, you know, now like credit cards, you make it so you can tap them in a lot of situations sure. rather than actually swipe or insert, because that action being simpler makes people more likely to do it. From a, from well, let's a also be, let's also be clear. It's also cooler. As soon as I got, well, as soon exactly, as I got, yeah. oh no! As soon as I got my Apple Watch, I went to the vending machine in our hall way too often because I was like, "Watch this beep soda." Yeah. <laughs> I just thought it was really cool. But the one of the reasons that people uh, really like having the QR code on the menu, specifically business owners, is now instead of holding a, a you know a paper menu. It's like, okay, tell the server what you want. And yeah, they can get some sort of information about, oh, what did you like? What did you not like? Now it's effectively like tracking clicks. They right. know exactly what you've looked at. They know exactly what you ordered. And they've added a layer of analytics to the menu ordering, mm-hmm. which I don't care. I think that's, you know, that's that, that's data for the purpose of making the business better. Some people might think it's kind of, eh, right. but that's the type of quote unquote privacy invasion that I think is, who cares? I mean, that's. That's fine. Now, if you really want weird privacy things, apparently in Korea and Japan, it is now a thing to put QR codes on tombstones so that you go past certain tombstones and you want to learn more about this person's life. Hmm. You just beep your phone. And I don't know if I'm there yet, well, but yeah, I mean, menus it, I'm okay with. Well, at the, uh, that, that will at least remove that, that problem where, you know, like your entire life is just a hyphen. Now it's a website, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but yeah, qr codes are so cool we ha- we actually did a project this was before you got here where um in in the class that we teach soft in the software engineering class the project one semester was for students to build a piece of software that was like a is like a pretend voting booth sort of right. thing and um as a receipt for voting so they had to have a paper trail um i bought a bunch of uh heat printers because I didn't want to buy ink, but those little receipt printers and they had to print a QR code on it that I could scan that would say who, who was voted on, you know, in that particular instance. So, um, you know, finding libraries to do it is not hard. It's gotten much more prevalent and it's, you know, kind of cool little fun thing you can do like uh, Arduinos and, Mm -hmm. you know, small, you know, personal, small computing devices like that, that if you wanted to go do it as like a project, print some QR codes for Mm -hmm. reasons. I don't know your own menu. (laughs) Yeah. Well, they're, I I just want to talk. They're very, they're very flexible, very easy to use. Uh, and, and, and again, just any information that can be encoded and decoded such that before and after are the same thing. I mean, you know, you can represent as a number, which means you can represent a QR code. Uh, there is actually a famous instance related to this where the the encryption key for Sony DVDs, like people figured out what that was and they were publishing the number online. And so Sony was trying to block it. Well, one person just encoded that key as a color. And so Sony tried to get a color removed from the internet. <laughs> Ooh. Well, be- because here's the thing: How do you make a number illegal? Because that's effectively <laughs> what an encryption key is. So there's actually a Wikipedia article called "Illegal Numbers" that's worth looking up on this. Yeah, that is. Um, and if you also want the weirdest ways or most unfortunate ways that the encoding could be used or the QR code could be used in 2015, I don't know if you remember this or not. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is when Keurig 
thought this was a great idea to require a small QR code on every K cup. Yeah. Uh, and th- and so you put if you put in a, a K cup into your Keurig machine that did not have the appropriate QR code on it, the machine would just say no right. and wouldn't make your coffee. Yeah. Which fails in so many different ways because one. People thought this was stupid to put, you know, digital rights management on your coffee. Yeah. But Keurig was trying to make more money. But two, you literally could just keep one of the tops and just put yep. it on top of the new yep. cup. And it would just scan it every time. There was, a, there was a juice machine like this where it was like it was a juicer where you had to buy their special packets. And it, it would just squeeze the, the pulp to make the juice. And then people realized that you could actually squeeze it by hand and actually the juice would come out better. <laughs> Their packets. And it was like a, it was like literally like a seven hundred dollar juicer or something like that. Yeah. Mm. It was just this classic Silicon Valley pipe dream. Well, that's what I got on QR codes. Yeah. Because I just want to talk about it. All right. Well, all right. Uh here's another question. Kind of in the same vein uh, to what we've talked about, we've talked a little bit about bots and we talked a bit about QR codes. This is similar. Why do websites require that you have lengthy and complex passwords, but your debit card only requires a four number PIN? Shouldn't the debit card, since, you know, that is actually the money, like the reason they protect the website is, oh, well, your credit card information might be here. Or, oh, your personal information might be here. Your 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 debit card has your actual money. So why is why do you only need four digit pin for that? Could you imagine if you rolled up to the Wegmans and mm-hmm. you swiped your card and they're like, enter your password and a and it was a full size keyboard. <laughs> You're yeah. like, hang on. <laughs> it's hey. eight asterisk exclamation wait, underscore. Wait, no, that's my password for Kroger. <laughs> hang on. Sorry, oh, no, I forgot. My, no, no, my fault. Wait, I do, need to do put... your passwords require numbers or symbols or both? I can't remember, but that affects which which one it is. No. Um, it's better to use phrases anyway, but that's a different argument. Phrases. Yeah, that's a different discussion, but yeah. Um, Well, it's a two-token system. It's a, You have to have the there, physicality of the card plus the number. There it is. There it is. So... The reason for this is two-factor authentication. And, and you mentioned it, because it's not enough to have the PIN or the card. You have to have both, right? And so having even something that seems insecure, like a four-digit PIN, which on its own is hilariously insecure, but if you have to have both that and the physical co- pardon me, and the physical card, then you now have two-factor authentication. And that was one of the early examples of that. And it's one of the reasons you should turn on two-factor authentication for the websites that you use that have sensitive information, like banking or, mm-hmm. I don't know, anything else that really... And anything you're going to make purchases on, for example. Anything, anything you make purchases on, things like, I mean, even things like Facebook, Twitter, anything where you're you're afraid that your account might something might happen. I, I turn on two factor authentication everywhere I can. Yes. Same one, one, because it doesn't bother me. I think it's kind of cool Two, I have an email address that apparently lots of other people in the world think they have, which is just sheriff. Right. At gmail.com. You got, you got there early. Yeah. I got there early. And so apparently there's a lot of sheriffs in Australia and South Africa mm-hmm. and England that really think they have my account. And they have tried to log into Google and GitHub and all right. sorts of things with, with my email, trying to reset the password. I'm like, stop it, stop it, stop it. It's not yours. Just yesterday, I got my third set of minutes from a condo board somewhere in Brisbane. Was it Brisbane or is it? Or was it Sydney? I can't remember, but it was somewhere in Australia. <laughs> and I've messaged these people multiple times. I don't live in your condo, but at least they weren't trying well, to well, hack my. They were trying see, to get my account. See, you're, you're playing this wrong. You should be saying, "Oh, hey, by the way, I lost my keys." And then, like, <laughs> look, you get you get a, you get a week in 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 Australia, right? When I say a week, maybe maybe cut it to three days because they might figure it out pretty quick. But well, it also takes a week to get there. Yeah, that's true. Practically, yeah, uh, especially right now. Um, what, but, but, but so 
Here, two factor good. Get two, two factor. Exactly. Two factor authentication is very good. And to be clear, so like um a lot of this is also why you should use the password manager and and uh, potentially, but also avoid reusing passwords. Uh because I learned this lesson uh when uh the Epic Game Store, which luckily I never actually used to buy something because my, my credit card information wasn't there, or whatever. They did this thing where it's like, oh, if you log in, just to try to incentivize people to actually use it instead of Steam, because how, how yeah, 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 how big a market Steam had, they would give free games out. And so I logged in at one point and claimed a free game, and then I forgot I had an Epic Game Store account for like three years, and I came back to it, and um, I had used, I had just because I was thinking like, oh, I'll change this later, and forgot to. I had used the password that I used before, which hadn't shown up on any list of, like, you've been pwned or whatever. Well, I came back, and my account had all the prices set to rubles, um, which is okay. which is the, the currency of Russia, which, I, which is not where I live. Um, uh, unless Russia's border now extends just 150 yards outside my house, considering how far away you are from me, but... Uh, well, I mean, maybe, I mean, the propaganda could be doing that well, who knows. No, um... Mm. But yeah, so that that is something that, that happened. Now, if I had had my credit card information on there, I have no... I have no doubt in my mind that they would have bought everything they could, and if they could have claimed my account and then, like, sold it to someone, they would have done so. Um... So yeah, I have two-factor authentication on anything that has my credit card on it. If the website doesn't support two-factor authentication, I guess they're not getting any money. Oh well. <laughs> I, my my um, Xbox account was hacked once. Not mm -hmm. hacked. I mean, it, I, I, hacking is not the right term here. This right. is, I had an insecure password and I was a dum-dum and someone bought $150 worth of X space bucks or whatever they were called at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and and it, it, it got, it got fixed, mm -hmm. but, but this is like you, like you said, you know, if, if there's a, there's a pro tip to leave from, to, from today's episode, other than QR codes are neat and don't lie about dancing too much at the local festival. Um, get up, you know, programs like one password for mm -hmm. both windows and Mac, although it's more of a Mac app, but it, it has a windows version as well. LastPass is one that's also very popular. Um, these password managers, you use one good password mm -hmm. to to lock that system, and you don't use that password anywhere else. Yeah. And then they have there's there's plugins for your browser. It will manage them for you. Um, for things like one password, uh, we use a uh, family account, and so my wife and I can share passwords to things like the the banking account, the credit right. card account, so that. We don't have to pass the passwords back and forth. They are just in the central account right. and it's, it's good to use. And if you need a third, if you need something for two factor authentication, uh, Google provides an app that is universally used. It's just a, it's just a, it's the same algorithm that everyone uses, mm -hmm. but Google provides one. And there's also one that I really like called Authy, A U T H Y, um, which is done by, I think they were bought by Intuit eventually. Um, but I find it to be a little bit, no, it was bought by Twilio. Mm -hmm. um, but I find it a lot easier to use, honestly, than Google's app. Yeah. And and, and something I would note is, uh, like, if you use Google Chrome, for example, it now very much incentive, like, pushes you towards using the, the built-in password manager, which there's nothing wrong with that, again, provided that your, True. your Google account has a good password. Uh, your, if, if nothing else, make sure your email account has a unique password complex passphrase. And I say phrase because that makes it easier for you to remember while it's still being long enough to be hard to guess. Yeah. If you think of it this way, I mean, there's mathematics behind it that we could go into. But mm -hmm. if you think about it this way, if you have, you know, a 10 character to 16 character list, you know, list of characters that are just letters, numbers, whatever, that is going to be very difficult to remember but it's only 10 or so characters long. Whereas I have effectively a short sentence that is my password. And so it what is, is that sentence, by the way, <laughs> it's will McBurney shut the heck up. Um, Everyone heard that. I had start to, hacking. I, I know I had, I had to, I had to start, I had to change it, but it's easy to remember. It's easy to type because you get in the flow of just typing that, that, that phrase. 
The trick is you might need to remember whether you have punctuation at the end or not and whether the first word is capitalized. That's always my problem. It's like, am I yelling this statement or is it just a statement? Mm. And I seem to change it whenever I change the long st- the, the sentence because one time it was it was a phrase from a video game and I just couldn't remember. Does the character scream this or do they just say it out loud? Did I give a period there? So right. You have to keep up with that. But Hey, hey, Will. Yeah. Is it legal to walk around in public in full plate armor? Um, I actually know that it in it, there there are places, very specific places where it's not allowed. Uh, it, for instance, it is illegal to wear plate armor into the chambers of parliament. We don't have parliament. Why? Well, I, I know, but I'm just saying Which like parliament? that is a, that Which? is that is a place where it is spe- every parliament. <laughs> uh, the the British Houses of Parliament. You cannot. The British. Okay. You cannot wear armor. Canadian Parliament, totally fine. Yeah, Canadian Parliament, fine. Congress, uh, I depends on the situation. No, um, you just need your tin foil hats going in there. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it's, it's actually there's a lot of laws. It because because England's been around for a while. Citation needed. <laughs> Um, but there's a, a lot of laws around how Parliament is governed that are very much antiquated, that date back to even like the 1500s and earlier. And one of them is, in order to make sure that the Houses of Parliament uh, were a um, were you know civilized and decent and not violent, and to prevent violent overthrows, you could not wear plate Those armor. Those would never happen. What are you talking about? You, yeah, you could not wear plate armor to the Houses of Parliament. Well, there you go. Uh, otherwise, I mean, you know, check your check your local jurisdictions. Uh, check your local jur- Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I wouldn't, <laughs> you I, basically like, check your local library. It wouldn't surprise me to learn, like, there's some small town in Indiana that, like, banned plate armor... Just because some guy was like being annoying and was wearing plate armor, <laughs> like I mean, there's a town in Indiana that their city code says pi equals three point two. So, that is, wait, what? Yeah, it, there's yeah, there's a town in Indiana that passed a city law saying that inside the city limits pi equals three point two. Because because <laughs> they didn't they thought it was a they thought it was a waste of student time to memorize digits of pi and they wanted to make it where students in the school system I guess could do math easier. Uh, obviously, there's there's let's say a couple flaws with their approach. <laughs> oh my God, but yeah, oh no, I, God. I don't know if that law in particular is still active. But there's like stupid laws everywhere. Uh, you know, for example, the chambers of parliament. Um. But yeah, no, I, I'm sure most of the time you'd be fine, but just check your local jurisdiction to make sure. Oh. Now, if you have a sword, that's a different issue entirely. But if just. Uh, a- uh, well, yeah. No. Weaponry versus. Okay. I, I mean, I'm not planning on showing up to day one in full plate armor. Like I said, it's going to be shirt and tie and exercise shorts because that is professional attire nowadays, along with whatever. I did order. Like ten new masks for going back to school. So mm, I got some new ones I'm, too. I'm strangely excited. I mean, they, they, I got some UVA ones, so you know that's that's cool. So yeah, yeah. I, I, and maybe maybe at some point I'll actually get my office back to the point that I can actually use it because it is definitely not in a point right now where it is well so, at all. Yeah, usable. The, the difficulty I've had they they haven't been collecting trash from the offices. For, you know, because people haven't been in them. So there's actually a fair amount that I've been having to cart out to the community trash cans. But it's not like they were going to go into your office and just start picking around. I mean, no, they no, were... no, but there's trash in the trash can by the door that hasn't oh. been picked up since like March of last year. I mean, I've been mm. nothing in there decomposed. I was like, that but... banana probably is doing great by now. Yeah. I've because I was in my office this summer for for the summer class. It it literally is a time capsule. I mean, I yeah. open I open the door, some sort of like you know air seal open, psh, open up. the The calendar on the wall still was March twenty twenty. Yeah, um, I had a ice- sign on my door for an event from March uh, twenty twenty. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the the note on the front of my door said "Be right back." You know. <laughs> 
back and f- <laughs> just 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 wait. And like you you get there and it's just like there's skeletons of students who've been waiting this whole time outside the door. They're just gonna haunt you now. Like you said, you'd be right back. <laughs> Where were you, Sheriff? Every Where time you close you? the door, you hear scratching and, and in a creaking voice. Have office hours started yet? <laughs> Don't stop it. Stop it. Uh, you're going you're gonna to give me nightmares tonight for when we actually get back to school. And I don't know if I'll be back in the office for office hours, but I know we'll be right back here next week on Thursday again for the 11th episode. Not counting our mini episodes, but this is the end of episode 10. Thank you all so much for again for joining us once more into the breach. Um, If you have not had the opportunity to subscribe on the platform of your choice, we'd very much appreciate it. Leave us a review, send us some feedback hosts at regraderequest.com. If you have any questions, you're welcome to record your question on the page at anchor FM, which you can get to at regraderequest.com. So, For myself and for Professor Will McBurney, take care, stay safe, and watch for falling goats. Especially if they're wearing plate armor and falling towards the chambers of parliament. Oh, that would hurt. Goats in armor? Yeah. Well, but I mean, then you have the the parliament issue, too. I mean, they're they're not going to be happy about it. Are they cosplay goats? Uh, They're LARPing goats, yeah. LARPing (laughs) goats. The, their, their title, LARPing Goats. <laughs> no, 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 no. The title is going to be um, England has been around for a while. Citation needed. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>